So in this video, we're going to be talking about the advantages and the disadvantages of a geared head versus a ball head. Let's do this. Those of you who are new to my channel, my name is James Kerwin. I'm a freelance uh, architecture, interior, ruins, relics photographer, uh, very much fine art, do print sales, do workshops when the pandemic isn't taking over our lives. And uh, I've been based now uh, nomadically in Georgia, actually, for nearly on a year, seeing out uh, the global situation. Uh, we're due to move on in March. If you want to check out my website, the link is in the description below. So I normally make content on a Thursday, uh, which is uploaded at seven o'clock. Uh, UK time. So if you want to check out more, please subscribe, hit the bell notification, and you'll be notified next time I'm uploading the content, which is usually location-based content. However, occasionally I do throw in gear. So on this episode, we're primarily talking about geared heads versus ball heads. And so let's start with the traditional ball head. Okay, so these are the most common types of tripod heads. They're quick and easy to adjust. They allow you to maneuver the camera into almost any position at a moment's notice. Ball heads are best used with lighter combinations of equipment. Um, so they aren't going to be suitable for a long telephoto lens, for example. My biggest problem with a ball head is actually the fact that it isn't very precise when you're looking to move uh, precise compositions and get things into position. When you unlock the ball, you're moving it around completely and not just on one angle or plane. And this can be particularly annoying, especially if you've spent loads of time leveling it, say perfectly, and only want to adjust it in one direction, not two or three. However, ball heads are an affordable option. Um, they, like I said, they usually come with a tripod um, or you can pick one up for around about hundred pounds. So really affordable pieces of kit. My only tip would be when it comes to ball heads is look up the guide weight. This particular one is quite light, it's for a travel tripod, and it's certainly not suited for something like my Canon 5DSR with a big heavy tilt shift lens on it. That's just not really what this is cut out for. The guide weight will help you try and keep st stop things from flopping forwards or really sharply moving forwards if you're trying to lock it down. That will try and stop that. Not perfectly, but it will. If you've got a mirrorless camera like the M50 that I'm recording on today, then you're likely to be fine with something like this. This is the V0E, just travel tripod head that comes with the Travel Angel by Benro. When you've got heavier bits of kit, something like this is probably not going to cut it. What you're going to need is something like the G2 from Benro or the Manfrotto X Pro Magnesium ball head, something like that that will really hold the weight of your camera and the gear. At the end of the day, it costs a lot of money. You don't want it flopping forwards and wrecking those precious lenses. This in turn, of course, then pushes the price of this up. This is no longer doable and no longer cheap. A ball head like that will set you back a couple of hundred pounds anyway, um, but they do have a weight capacity of up to 10 kilograms, which is perfect when you're using heavy equipment. Even a brand new mirrorless camera with a G Master lens or something like this is gonna be really you know, heavy and gonna weigh down the ball head. So what is a geared head exactly? Well, a geared head is something that you can precisely control uh, through control levers, which you guessed it, control gears or switches within the, the actual three axis to be able to precisely move things into position. Similar to the pan tilt heads, geared heads instead make their adjustments by turning the handles. This allows for incredibly fine adjustments to the positioning. By using the three knobs, you can control the pan, the tilt, and of course, the yaw. However, in turn, it's a lot slower to use, so it's a slower pace of working. There are a number of brands that have geared heads like this one, but the principle is the same with all of them. They mostly differ in the size and the weight and how you use them, really. Uh, that's the only differences between the different geared heads, uh, of course, and the price point. That's also a difference as well. I use the Benro GD3WH, which basically means geared driven three-way head. And it's actually one of the lightest geared heads on the market currently, and it does the job really well. Some of the very first geared heads on the market were by Manfrotto and they were incredibly heavy uh, and disjointed. They didn't quite work very well and things were a little bit awkward. However, we've moved on a lot since then. The Sunway Photo has one as well now on the market, which is designed again at using it with heavier gear. A uh, very nice looking piece of equipment, but I have never used one. There's also a newer brand, the Regetti. Uh, they have one which is the RG1. Now the RG1 uh, looks absolutely amazing. It's a fairly new player to the scene but both of these options are more expensive than this Benro here. So which of these is the right choice for you? Well, I'm just here to make sure that you have all of the information and that choice is very much down to you and what is right for your needs. For everyday photography, 
or perhaps you're someone who doesn't use a tripod very often, then a ball head's gonna be absolutely fine for your needs. It would cut it absolutely fine as long as you get one that's the right weight for your capacity. I wouldn't say you wanna buy something then have to keep upgrading later. That's the mistake we've all done in the early days. Definitely invest something early on that's gonna stretch out and last over a period of time. For people on a budget, ball head is usually the cheaper choice as well, of course. Some geared heads go into excess of uh, extremely expensive. Uh, some ball heads do, but you can usually pick up a very good model um, for probably in a region of circa £100. Ball heads also usually come with tripod packages. So you can usually pick one up, get yourself a decent tripod, and it'll come with a ball head. So that makes the, the combination a cheaper option as well. However, not all tripods, of course, come with a ball head. It very much depends on the price point. Some of the higher end tripods come with legs only because it's then down to the professional. They're aimed at professionals, so it's then down to the professional to choose his or hers correct head for their needs. If you're into a slower pace of photography, such as architecture and interiors, or maybe landscapes, then perhaps a geared head is the right choice for you. It's a slower way of working and makes you think about your compositions. 100% the ball head is a quicker way of working. However, it cannot compete with the accuracy and precision of a geared head. And a geared head also does another very important job. It enables you to slow down. And that's the thing I love about geared head. It makes you think about those compositions, it makes you think about where you're lining things up. And also, if you walk off, come back, your composition's not moved. No slippage at all when it comes to a geared head. I also love combining either of these though with an L bracket so it keeps the weight through the center of the tripod and then really I can finely tune my compositions on either portrait or landscape orientation. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Something a little bit different. We've done a little versus, ball head versus geared head, and I hope you've taken something away. Of course, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments section below. It's kind of difficult for me at the moment, that process where I love doing my on-location videos, but these are the type of videos that gets views and people to my channel when I'm certainly late to the party. So if you've enjoyed this content, I usually do location content and go out in the field shooting, looking for abandoned buildings, relics, ruins, and stuff like this. So please check out other work in the feed and I'll love to see you around. So if you hit that subscribe and that bell notification, then you'll be notified next time I upload new content. I think that's pretty much everything for this week. What are you choosing? Maybe I'll go for a geared head. Maybe, maybe. Hope you have a good day. Thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you all very soon.